Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this mutual peace engagement conference here in Switzerland just before Birkenstock starts with the conference. When I heard that the government in Switzerland, I don't, I don't label it my government, the government in Switzerland, decided to make a peace conference without one of the most important conflict party, Russia, was not invited. I thought the civil society has not only the right, they must do something additional or parallel or show that civil society can do it different. And that's why I'm very happy that today we will have a conference with both conflict parties. Both conflict parties are invited, Russia is invited, USA is invited. You will see afterwards the presentations of these people. The people from Russia will be here, uh, Alexander Peske, he is a Swiss uh, Russian uh, journalist, politician and entrepreneur. Ralf Bossart will be after me, he is a former uh, special military advisor to the Swiss ambassador on the conflict in and around Ukraine. He will explain the situation from his point of view. Then we will have at uh, five o'clock Ray McGovern. He will present the situation, the point of view of USA and NATO. And Florian Pfaff, he will uh, explain what is happening in Germany since a long time. Why the constitution or das Grundgesetz is completely out of order since a long time. And I think also in Switzerland, uh, das Grundgesetz, our constitution is also completely uh, out. It is not in use anymore and that's why we as civil society, it's the last moment to wake up and to act. When the Ukraine war, according to the, to the news, to the mainstream news, the, nuclear, the, the, the war in Ukraine started invasion from Russia uh, February 22, 2022. And in the eyes of the mainstream, that's the war. It started uh, 22. And in my city, uh, there was a campaign, We Love Ukraine, there was a festival and they uh, organized money to send to the Ukraine. It's the first time I am living in this country that when there is an illegal war, that we uh, try to help the people who are in, in problems. So I did a campaign in my city and I said, we, this is a kind of racism. We love peace for everyone, not only for Ukraine. There are so many conflicts. Huh? So, for example, 99, uh, there was the attack to Serbia. Nobody did a special uh, festival for that. 2011, Libya. 2015, Yemen. Yemen is a catastrophic situation. People are hungry and everything. Nobody talks about Yemen. Why not? Uh, 2014, uh, the Russia, um, sorry, Syria got, got bombarded by USA, France and Great Britain. Then 2018, Syria um, got bombarded by Israel and so on. 2001, in Afghanistan, you might know after 9-11, after Afghanistan was the bad guy. And all these wars start with lies. All. And the first victim of war is truth. So also Switzerland, you know, these flags, who knows this flag, who knows this flag, this flag, who knows this flag, this flag everyone knows, no? Because since two years, the Ukraine flag is everywhere in uh, Winterthur, in Zurich, wherever you go, you see the solidarity. In a neutral country, we see solidarity. I think either we have solidarity for everyone who is suffering or for nobody. That's consistent. All other is, is kind of a str strange story. So we see, you know, a comedian gets embraced by our form, not our, by the foreign minister of Switzerland. Uh, 2022, in May, there was the World Economic Forum. Mr. Cassis just uh, was on the street. I was there as a street worker and I told him, you 
are going the wrong direction, you are misusing the constitution of Switzerland. He said, I had the right, I had the laws to do, to, to follow the, 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 the guideline of the European Union with sanctions. And sanctions is also a form of war. Now we see in this special situation, NATO tanks are passing our country. NATO shall have a, a, um, a building in the Maison de la Paix. Maison de la Paix means it is the house of peace. Then our war minister, I label her, Mrs. Amher, the war minister, she is a good friend, seems like, of the NATO general secretary. And now 4,000 soldiers have to protect the Bürgenstock. You see the flag? <laughs> and I think I'm living in a, in a development country. And since a long time I've been, I'm living in a develop, development country. And you see NATO is also here, you know, the architecture of our mass media. This is the architecture, Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberger, Atlantic Brücke and so on. They are on top of the media system. And the most important journalist, where is he? He's in jail. Why is he in jail? Because he developed means to find out truth in war, criminal acts, not of the Russian. If, 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 if he would have found out of the Russian, he would not be in jail, right? And if, he's in, 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 he has, if he is delivered from Great Britain to the USA, he will have even more problem than now. And it is, uh, what, what is going with, with him, this is, it's just a shame for Europe. It's a shame. And he says, the media could have stopped if they had searched deep enough, if they hadn't reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped the war. So 99% of the people, they want peace and justice. But there is a problem of the system, because if you have a pension fund, your pension fund is investing in war, right? So by heart, you go, for example, in the church. It's not by accident that the Grosse Münster is uh, upside down. This is the, the Mr. Sigrist, he was the priest of the of the of the um, in Zurich. And these two guys are colleagues. This is number two, Mr. Philip Hildebrand, he's number two of BlackRock. And they are colleagues, and they had a speech in March 2022. And then Mr. Hildebrand says, Yes, the video exists. Yes, it's really tragic, you know, this war there, it's very bad, and we hope the best. We hope the best. If he hopes the best, the war will never end. Because war is paying for this system. So we have 5.3 billion human beings who are in a monotheistic uh, religious system. So it, uh, Christians, Muslims and Jews. And these 5.3 billion people in their religion, in their uh, ethical conduct, to take interest is prohibited. That means to make money out of money is prohibited. So that's a majority. If they follow their own religion, then it is not possible to make money out of money without personal work involved. And I must say this is a form of extremism. Yeah? Sometimes if it's hot, we eat a product which sells you extremism. Yeah? Nestle is an extremism company. They even write it. And profit maximization is a form of extremism. So in Matthew 6.24 it is written, God or money. Not and money, or money. You cannot serve both. But we try to serve both, and that doesn't work. So if we really want to have a, a peaceful society, we have to have an economic system which is supporting peace and not war. And Joseph Goebbels, he said, truth is the greatest enemy of the state. And this is exactly that what we observe today also. Whoever tries to come close to truth, I don't say we are, this, we, we are talking truth, huh? We have to be critical also by our words in this conference, but we try to come close to truth. And if we do that, 
we are a danger for the system. And because there is so much suffering in an increasing way, we make now one minute of silence for all the people who suffer because of extensive greed. And we try to focus on truth, freedom and peace. All the pictures with people I show you, you in this presentation, you always have to, ha to ask, whom are they representing? Did, they elect, did we elect these people? No. But Mr. Schwab, he says, we penetrate the cabinets. And he said, half of the cabinet of France, of Argentina and Canada is penetrated by young global leaders. So they passed his school. Okay? That means if we believe that we are living in a democracy, you know, I mean, it's like telling a child a storybook. It's not a reality. Reality is something else. And our federal constitution, this is actually our ethical conduct, what we should behave in Switzerland, you know? So there is written put mutual consideration and respect for diversity, not monoculture, diversity, responsibility towards future generations. And those, about freedom, that's very interesting, those who use their freedom remain free. So we have to use our freedom. If we don't use our freedom, we lose it. So we have to become active as civil society, and this is what we are doing today, and it will not end till we have peace on earth. And what is also interesting, you know, the gap between poor and rich is getting larger and larger and larger. And this is also a cause of conflict. Yeah? If people have nothing to eat, they go and rub. They go and become violent. So they, it is written in the, in the Constitution that the strength of the people is measured by the well-being of the weakest. I think if Orwell would read the book of this year, I think he would be completely flabbergasted. Yeah? And you see how everything is upside down. For example, there is a European peace facility in Germany and, and, and Europe. They use money for armed forces. So if somebody, a politician, talks about peace, be double careful. Be double careful. Okay? Because most of them, they are just lying. They say all the time we are fighting against terrorism, we are fighting against poverty, we are fighting against underdevelopment. I mean, Switzerland as a third world country tells the people in Africa how to live. This is a joke. Yeah? And in the Swiss Peace Conference it's quite similar, you know? I mean, economic war, you know, I mean, if there is an economic war against Russia, it's the poor people who suffer. It's not the top, it's the poor people. Yeah? And the Swiss money goes into arms in, uh, instead of peace, so the Swiss Development Agency, more and more uh, it is invested not in development, uh, in, re in real cause-oriented development work, it is in, in symptomatic uh, work and in arms it's going. And if uh, refugees from the Ukraine are well off and somebody from Yemen is, is, is second class, this is a form of racism. Is conducted in Switzerland, this kind of racism. And we have to understand that if this goes in this direction, hunger will further increase. In the last four years, hunger has doubled. Doubled. Okay? So there was a kind of very dangerous virus, and we spent billions, and the poverty doubled. Something is wrong with this kind of strategy. Nature continues to be damaged, and I tell you, war is the worst 
for nature. War is the worst. Also people who believe in this kind of uh, climate change, that we are the main cause of climate change, I tell you, yes, if we are using atomic bomb, then we are really a cause of climate change problems, right? So deaths will increase and who will, who will finally adopt the deaths? Future generations. Do we love our children? That's a central question. So more suffering for all, I think this is not what we really want. Here, there is a Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, AIM 8. You have an agenda of Sustainable Development, Agenda 2030, and there, if you look in the agenda, the AIM 8 says infinite GDP growth. Infinite, okay? In an agenda for sustainable development, if GDP is growing, that means more cars, more tanks, more bombs, more uh, windmills, <laughs> probably not more food. Yeah? And when um, Liz Truss was elected, she, she remained only a short time, and not because of that what she said. She said, yes, I'm ready to launch a nuclear war. And people were applauding. If you look at that video, I, you feel so sad. What kind of people are there? And she's, she said we need infinite growth. So that's why maybe number eight is, is like this, you know. If you put eight upside down, again, it's 180 degree, you turn it. Mr. Ber Mrs. Baerbock would say uh, 360 degree, anyway. Mm -hmm. Then you have infinite sign. And there is an alternative, you see. Small countries like Bhutan, they want GNH. Gross na national happiness, brutto national glück. So gross national happiness, they are going in that direction. So for example, propaganda is prohibited in Bhutan. We can learn something from them. Uh, organic farming is what they do. By f small farms, not always more concentration by, by big companies. This was in Davos 2020, too, in May. Where is the NATO war crime palace, I ask you. And how is it possible that Switzerland is accepting something like this? I wonder, really. Nobody was upset. So you see also these kind of faces here. These faces, they are not elected anymore. I mean, he's all the time at the World Economic Forum. I mean, he's a war criminal, 2003. He's a war criminal. Uh, who talks about environment and about CO2, but he's a war criminal in Yugoslavia, together with him. Huh? And he, the SRF, uh, our uh, Swiss radio and television, they said he is a noble piece of war. He received a noble piece of war, not of peace. He should bring it back. And if a small guy like this comes to Switzerland, he has to leave our country. I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. Tich Nathan, he said, you know, they operate always with fear. If we have fear, if we are in a fear situation, we, are, we don't have our consciousness ready to investigate properly. And this is what they do all the time. They want to, us to be afraid. And if they do not have a real enemy, then they will invent one. And of course, for some people it's a success, you know. I mean, it goes up like crazy. And if you deliver weapons, you will have more war. And if you have more war, you will have more refugees. It's clear. And you will have more people who suffer like this. Do we want this? I think most of the people don't want. The enslavement is like never before. It never happened like this. It is like with organic, you know, uh, or not organic, the organs which are sold, the children which are terribly treated like never before, uh, soldiers, I mean, they are getting out the resources for renewable energies out of the soil in, in Africa, in, in China, in India, in, in, and so on, you know, in Australia. It's terrible. If we love our children, we don't, we don't accept this. Simply, we don't accept. Henry Kissinger, he died with 100 years. I must say, one good thing before he died, he said, we should stop the war 
we should uh, give this kind of part in Russia. He, just before he died, he, he became a bit uh, more, uh, you know, soft. But he was, in his life, he was very clear, you know. Who controls food supply, controls the people, who controls energy, will control the continents, and who controls the money, controls the world. And that's why we have to focus on money. If we want to stop the war and we, we don't focus on monetary system, on, on economy, and on relationship between economy and big money and so on, we will not find a solution, you know. We are, we are just, you know, hamsterrad, how you say. So, there is some newspapers that said, you know, half of Ukraine agricultural land is already in the hands of big companies. Yeah? And if the food production is in the hand of big company, then we have a problem. Because that what is written in the Constitution, that we have an independency, is broken, is not functioning anymore. That means we become more and more dependent on a few, few, few people. Yeah? And of course it's clear, if I am Mr. Blackrock or Mr. Vanguard, and now Ukraine is losing the war, so I invested some money, I'm losing this money, I don't want this, so people have to be killed before that. So small people, poor Slavic people are fighting against each other. We have to understand, I mean, Ukrainians, people, they are brothers and Russians. They have very often a family relationship. So Slavic people are killing Slavic people for the profits of a few. And if you read this the other way around, it becomes WEF. Yeah? It's by coincidence, I don't know. So before they said, uh, Washington said, you know, the Russians um, are, we, we fight against Russia until the last European, now it's until the last, uh, it was until the last Ukrainian, now it's until the last European, because the Ukrainian, more or less, <laughs> they are killed by greed. Yeah? And of course, there are other uh, business models, for example, lithium. In Donbass, you find lithium for renewable energies. Uh, 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 a politician from Germany said, you know, we, ha we have to fight for lithium because we want renewable energy. I mean, for the windmills, we have to kill people. Do we want this? No. Another rich man, he got elected. I don't remember. Yeah? He said, there is a class warfare. All right. But it's my class, the rich class, that's making war. And we are winning. And we are winning because we shut up, we are quiet, the civil society, we are so many people. And if we accept this, of course it's going in that direction. I said, the last four years, poverty and hunger doubled. But the wealth of the super, super, super extreme rich also. For example, Bill Gates, 16 billion more, billion more in, in three years or in two years. Yeah. Warren Buffett, only 12. Jeff Bezos, 76 billion. I mean, with two hands with a brain, you have to work for eons. With a honest, fair, ethical work, you cannot, not even in, in 25,000 lifetimes, you cannot make so much money. Something is wrong in that system. And we always have to ask, it's the profit for whom? And the situation today is that 1% has as much uh, wealth as 99%. Eight people, again eight, have more uh, assets than half of the world's population. This is completely upset. And many people think the politicians, they are the decision makers. No, it's completely wrong. Here. We don't know them. Okay? These people we don't know. We don't know their names, they didn't get elected. And they are paying mass media. Mass media and the money is going, I mean, in the Pentagon, Tagi said 2009, there are 27,000 PR managers in the Pentagon. What are they doing? They are selling as war. Okay? So if we are afraid, because we don't understand that this is a kind of uh, cognitive warfare, yeah? Then we just said, this is a bad guy. 
you know, Saddam Hussein is the bad guy now, it's Putin right now, and the next will come, you know, they invent the next one, yeah? So the money system is based on interest and making money out of money, and this finally is creating wars. There is uh, Jean Bourré, it's a French philosopher and a, a, a historian, he said the capitalism is carrying the war like the clouds are carrying the rain. It's kind of logic in that system. That's why we have to focus in that economic system. The economic system is that which creates war. It's not that we really want to have it, but our pension fund you know, is dependent on these kind of games. And just when this journalist became retired, he said <laughs> that they are prostitutes. Yeah? It's, it's just cut, it's on top. They said, he said, very honestly, that we are paid that to keep silence about our honest opinion. You all know it, and I know it, that we are slaves. And we are writing what the money tells us to write. So he said, it, it, so the story is an old story, it's not something new. It's a very old story that they lie to us, and they lie to us, and we have to use our brain and our heart to understand what is true. For example, you see here, when uh, it's always positive, you know, it's uh, endlich Obama greift zur großen Keule. So they don't say this is a catastrophe. They say, yes, now finally, you know, we get justice by war. Now recently, the same uh, magazine, jetzt zeigt sich, you know, now you see that NATO is stronger than the Russians, yeah? You it's a positive message here. And we have, for example, the, the newspaper Figaro in, in, in France, it's in the hands of Dassault. And Dassault is producing arms and jets and war uh, instruments, killing instruments. They are producing killing instruments and they sell it. So, Switzerland is the hub of the problem. This is the hub. This is the Bank for International Settlement and it was the Nazi bank, you know. Hilmar Schacht, he was in the, uh, in the Bank of International Settlement. At that time it was another name. And they organized the Second World War for the, for the German. If you turn off the money uh, supply, the game is over, the war is over. But he organized money that the Second World War can continue and in the Second World War that they were able to attack Russia. Yes? And now again we make the same mistakes. And now they, they want to stop that we use cash money, CBDC, right now it's a testing phase in Switzerland. Maybe most of the people don't know even that we are in a testing phase of CBDC with the, with the Circle Cantonal Bank, with UPS. Uh, and with the Swiss uh, Central Bank and so on. And they control us absolutely. This is the boss of this institution here, Augustin Carstens. He's a strong man. And he says how money system has to work. I tell you, did he get elected? Do you know this man? He got elected by you? I don't remember. And this is exterritorial. They don't write, you know, uh, maybe you heard about uh, the Koch Institute now. They had some protocols, all black. They don't even write protocols. But they decide what about our money. And if they decide about our money, then they are stronger than our democracy. We have to understand that. Rheinmetall, biggest company, arms, murdering instrument producer. Five times the share price, five times up. Now they are sponsoring, uh, not Russia, but Borussia Dortmund, not Russia they are sponsoring, Borussia Dortmund. That a club is accepting this and that their fans are accepting this. They should not show, they should not go to any game anymore. That would be a, a sign. And you see it here, you know, there was depression 20, uh, 1929, Second World War, Korea War, Vietnam War, 9-11, it goes up. You know, there is a saying, if the, bonks, if the bombs fall, the exchange, stock exchange are going up. So if the bombs fall, the stock exchange is going up. And you see now, you know, 
the bad, bad Russian here. He's spending 10 times less than USA. USA is spending two and a half billion per day, per day. And there are one billion people not having enough food. So much suffering. And where are they spending the money? How is this possible in democracies, in the so-called democracies? And qui bono is really an important question. So we have to understand, no money means no war. So maybe we should live without money. Of course, you know, the military bases of the USA, you compare it with Russia. I mean, this is not the military base, this is the country. They have in Syria and, 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 and some few spots they have military bases. But look here, the police everywhere, but if it, if, it, if it would be a good police, okay, but I don't think it's a good police. With such a budget what we have seen before. These people now in University of Zurich, these people come, see off with the Swiss Institute uh, uh, für Auslandforschung and European Institute in Zurich, they invite people like that. I mean, they are, they are propagating war. And we were, we were in, the, in, the, in this institute, I'm not allowed anymore to enter the University of Zurich, you know. For two years I'm not allowed anymore. Yes? So, these people are working against law because any propaganda in Switzerland is, is prohibited by law in Switzerland. Most of the people don't know that. UN Charter prohibits not only the violence, the threat of violence is also prohibited. And the Swiss Constitution, Article 2, 4, to Article 2 is the aim of, of Switzerland. If you look in the Constitution, it's the aim of our country is a commitment for just and peaceful international order. We are violating this day by day. So you see here uh, who is going in which direction, who is really in danger. Is it really USA? I don't see USA here. Yes? Who is kind of attacked? By whom? It's NATO. And 1990, it was given by hand to Gorbachev, and given by hand by Gorbachev means this is a contract. Not even an inch NATO is going further towards east. And since then, I think 15 countries more, or 14 countries more. Now we are more than 30 member states of NATO. 32. So these are they all? Are they? <laughs> he's elected. He's my my master, huh? Dreverman, Assange, um, Snowden, and so on. These people, they are dangerous according to the to the mass media. And these these people, you know, they do whatever. I mean, fuck the EU. She she can repeat. Fuck the EU. No problem. You know. He was in the, uh, last year, he was invited in the Hallenstadion in Zurich. And people were applauding to him, a war criminal. Very good. He was also invited by the university in Zurich. Huh? It's really amazing how the civil society is sleeping. And they are applauded, they are applauding at this, they are clapping their hands, you know. So now uh, I'm coming to that what we will discuss at the end. There are some suggestions for long-term peace enhancement and we will discuss this at the end of the day together to find kind of suggestion how we can become a, a, a more peaceful society. So <laughs> the preamble what was uh, written by Peter Koenig, uh, ancient World Bank officer, he said, all the politicians, big shot, financial or oligarchs and other power broke brokers calling for war should first, before anybody else, go to the front and fight as soldiers. That rule might stop all wars, right? So if Mrs. Uh, Strack Zimmermann, Maria Agnes, if she makes more war propaganda, you go yourself there, okay? You go yourself. Now I would like to thank you very much for uh, listening to me, how much, how much time I have? Well, we have 25 minutes more. Okay. Do you have any question? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Uh, uh, war 
warmongering is prohibited by law, but uh, what does it work? Uh, all people know that it's forbidden. Uh, also, uh, waging a war, not only propaganda, is strictly prohibited by law, but no one cares about. Uh, yes. Can we do that people may care about? <laughs> I don't have a glass uh, bowl to, to tell you. I think it's always the thing that civil society has to become more active. Yeah? So the solution for everyone is that we follow one other master of mine. You, know? you must be the change you want to see in the world. I, I mean, if civil society sees that in the university they are making war propaganda, they have to get up, they have to go there, they have to organize, they have to say, Mrs. Stark Zimmermann, not with us, go home. Or you go directly to the front of Ukraine, we have a helicopter which is ready, you can just go. We have to go in that direction, because we cannot believe to the words of the politicians. Yeah? But I don't have a solution. You know, if you, if you are a candidate for parliament, uh, there. <laughs> For the first time, uh, till you understand how it's working, you, you are already retired. So it's so much corruption in the system, and I must not tell you, <laughs> you, you are from the big canton, as we say. North of Switzerland is the big canton, and uh, I mean, this is now re really peak of corruption, what is happening there. And we have a kind of, of, of a superstar, it's Wilhelm Tell in Switzerland. and. Uh, he did the same like this dog, you know. We can, the dog can be our example, you know. This is the head of, of Gessler. And these people here are doing as the politicians tell them to do, because they are afraid. We have to stop to be afraid and we have to follow our four-leg friends. That's one of the solutions. I mean, if you see also what, what Drivenman is doing, I mean, it's fantastic. He's more than 80 years old and he, he makes so much and media is not inviting him anymore. Or they even say that he is, uh, uh, that he is um, anti Semite and so on. I mean, they always try to put people in a, in a difficult situation. Any other question? Yes, Alexander? You, you speak about um, yeah, the money. We have to follow the money. Uh, the race of the money. Yes. You told about the uh, difficult with uh, handling with uh, cash. Yeah. Yes. More and more and more countries. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the the new digital tool uh, is uh, digital money. Yeah. Yes. It's also a tool of control for us. Do you think maybe uh, blockchain currencies, Bitcoin, or what would you take? Yeah. It's maybe can be uh, it can be. Uh, um, you know, option to avoid the state control of our business life. I think the best what we can do is to have a good relationship with our neighbors. I don't believe too much in this, all this electronic gadget. I mean, we see now that there is an exponential uh, tendency of all these um, uh, blockchain systems. They use a lot of energy and um, <laughs> and uh, I'm not going in that direction, but I know people are going in this direction. I think we should more locally uh, network and, for example, having a permaculture garden with others together, trying to have a good preparation, what also Weir is doing, to have a very good preparation that if the game players on top want us to make our life difficult, we will just not go to the place they tell us to go. But I don't, again, I don't have the golden solution. Everyone has to find his own way. And I think we have to network more that the work together with left, with right, with whatever, with, we cannot choose our neighbors, but we have to find a way that we respect the good qualities of everyone we meet. And if we find a mix of the good qualities of everyone we meet, then I see a possibility that peace and justice is in, in, in the small area and then it can grow. And you, of course we have to start in the family. 
And this is will also this is destroyed right now in the family also. You you see that the people think everything. So we have to understand if they do something against us that we have to make the resistance. And the resistance can be without uh, violence. It can be without violence. Yeah, Peter. Coming back to the law that we don't have, we don't have any laws anymore. It's absolutely right. About 25 years ago, uh, I think it was Tony Blair, another British Prime Minister, who gradually, softly introduced in a speech the rules-based order. Everybody was looking and wondering what could that be. In the meantime, the rules-based order has really overwhelmed us and has flooded the world which means that there are no more national laws, let alone international laws that are applicable. It's just the rules-based order, which are made by the elite according to what they need. Now, this is just a statement of fact. What can we do about that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what I think we try, we should try, right? <laughs> right? Go back to the law. Go back to our real law, to the international law, and make sure that people understand that there is an international law and that the rules-based orders describe what it means and make, make sure that the people actually know that they're being fooled by something that doesn't exist, that has no grounds. Absolutely. And I think this is one of the things that civil society can do, and that's what we are here for, uh, among other things to make sure that people understand that they are being fooled every day. And the rules-based order is one of the things that the elite is using to uh, enslave us. So, I, I just tell you, I agree. I don't have the golden solution. Uh, I mean, the people are attacking our brain now. If you look what uh, Michael Niels is writing, uh, uh, they try it in every direction and if you look at the people uh, on the street or in the train, you know, they are so much absorbed with these kind of gadgets. And I think we should just go more into the forest and connect with the nature, uh, embrace a tree and so on. It is, I don't have the golden solution, but I know we are 99% and the others are less than 1%. This is what I know. That means if they say, you should not talk with left, you should not talk with right, you should not talk with these extremists. We talk with everyone. I talk with everyone. Because this is the solution. We respect each other as human beings and we tr it's written also in the Constitution to respect all the a, a diversity of, of, of meanings, of understandings, of interpretations. <clears throat> this is the way I think we should go, but we have to understand what is the, what is the agenda of the people who want to to separate us. Yeah. Thank you very much for your passion to listen to me and let's hope it will also the energy will go in all direction that people will wake up as soon as possible. We don't have much time to lose. Thank you very much. <laughs>